We are here with John Hodkin, also known as Inner Tuba to you guys, and Nick White, who is going to be helping John on this upcoming tour, which is the subject of this segment. So, fellas, uh, hello. How are you doing? Hello. I'm great. Good Thank morning. We're nice doing great. Good. It's, it's just great to have you both here. John, always uh, a pleasure to have you on the show. You're always up to something interesting. Yep. And uh, this is certainly no exception. So uh, we'll get back to you, John, in a second. Let's maybe start yeah. with Nick. And uh, since the folks don't know who you are, Nick, maybe you can give us a little bit of background on yourself. Well, good morning. Um, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, the only reason I'm on this podcast is because I discovered John in his uh, journey plan. And it's like, oh, I've got to meet this guy. I've got to find out who he is. So, um uh, bicycling for me has been since my earliest childhood memories, it's been my favorite thing and, um, did some long bike rides during my younger years. Um, and about 25 years ago or so, 20, 25 years ago, we discovered recumbent bikes, um, just due to back issues and so on. Um, I wasn't enjoying biking as much and I don't even remember how I discovered there was such a thing as a recumbent bike, but, uh, my wife and I both got, uh, our, our first ones were, uh, sun easy one uh, light and uh, we rode those uh, for years um, and then uh, just a few years ago um, uh, unfortunately my wife fell and broke her leg and uh, we explored uh, how she was going to continue riding and she was worried she wouldn't and I said well no let's look into recumbent trikes and so she got we got one for her it was fantastic it was uh, outstanding and then uh, the whole family kind of <laughs> migrated over. We have a, a fleet of various recumbent trikes in the family now, and uh, uh, we we split our residency. Uh, I'm retired. Uh, we are in Florida right now. Uh, we have kids and grandkids in Wisconsin and in Florida, so we have recumbent trikes in Wisconsin and Florida. And uh, as a result, we can ride 12 months a year. And for those of you that are in the north right now and hearing that, I'm sorry. I, I regret the cold weather you've had. Apology uh, is not accepted. All right, Nick, <laughs> let's move along. Uh, you did tell me uh, off off camera earlier about some of the uh, some of the recumbents that you have taken in, fixed up and and uh, and rehabbed and, and sold, uh, well, especially yeah. during COVID. Was that the story? Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Um, so COVID began three years ago and all of a sudden there was no place to go, nothing to do. And <clears throat> as we were learning about recumbents, as, as I was learning about them, I realized um, there was a market out there and particularly here in Florida um, with uh, I, I kind of like a rescue dog operation. It was a, a rescue uh, trike operation um, because I would find ones that had been um, uh, abandoned, mis un under cared for, and so on. I took them in. I had some bike knowledge, uh, some skills. I've gained more. Um, I'm not. Uh, I, I say I'm. I know enough to be dangerous, but um, over time, because there was a, a shortage of uh, vehicles that you could buy at, at bike shops, um, there was a great interest, and everybody wanted to find a way to be outside. So more and more people just simply were desperate for them. So over the first couple of years of the pandemic, uh, most of it was in Florida, a little bit up in Wisconsin. I, I managed to flip about 70 or 75 trikes, um, put them in the hands of people who were discovering the joy, um, simply able to ride again and hadn't for a long time. And I also met some people, as we all know, who had physical limitations for one reason or another, for whom the recumbent trike was really their, their savior. Um, so it was, it's all about the people. Um, my, you know, my background is in education. I was a music educator for 24 years. Uh, I did some technology work uh, as a district technology director, but regardless of what it is in education, it's always about the students, it's about the kids and the people, and that's kind of how I feel it is about the bikes and the trikes. And um, then when I met John, I found out that's kind of how he's wired too. If I Well, that if gets to my last question for you here, uh, Nick. Uh, you told us that you had heard about uh, John and sound like a – what he was doing was really worthwhile and you decided to, uh, to kind of chip in. Tell us uh, what made you decide, what was it about what John does that made you decide you wanted to help out and, and what do you intend to do to help him? Well, um, first I reached out just to tell him what a fantastic project it seemed to be. And, uh, but that also I, I had the trike background, I had the music background and I'm retired. So I have a little time on my hands. 
Um, just offered to help any way I could, perhaps to link up with potential uh, venues where he could perform and so on. It's a little easier for me to talk to people on the phone than it is for him to cross the puddle on the phone. And also there's the time difference. So um, I'm just trying to offer my services as a liaison to, to, to help him out any way I can. Um, why did I do it? Because I, I do things I have a passion for. And I, John certainly lives his life doing his passions. And, um, and I, I have the same ability to reflect back that that's kind of how my entire life is, is revolved around my passions. This is one I, I, he and I won't meet in person until somewhat well into the tour, but I do plan to ride along with him for a few segments of it um, when he's up in the, the northern half of the trip. And uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to be available to help him online and, and try to find venues if I can. All right. That sounds great. Very nice of you to do that. And I know John appreciates it. John, uh, let's start talking uh, about your background first for the uh, two or three people who are watching who don't know who you are and don't know about Inner Tuba. Give us a, 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 an elevator pitch here. Tell us what you have been doing uh, over the last number of years and, uh, and uh, bring us up to date on up until this tour. Okay, so very brief um, historical background. In a tuba, uh, my cycle touring musical show uh, began in the year 2000, and it was in 2001 that I migrated from bicycles to recumbent tricycles. Um, and it's really born of, uh, the, of the, the love of the four T's, as I call it. I love my um, tuba. I'm a tuba player. I love my tricycle. I love my trailer. And I love to travel with those things. And I've been cycling and performing and touring mostly through the UK from the year 2000 to 2019. In 2019, I did my first international tour, uh, which took me to the Midwest, sorry, the Midwest of the United States of America. I did uh, Ragbri, the Register's annual Great Bicycle Ride across Iowa, which was a, an incredible cycling challenge. And then after that, I started cycling up the Mississippi River to the Quad Cities and a little bit beyond there towards Minnesota. And um, I played with bands and I did all sorts of community performances as well. Uh, but the, the, the key to that tour was that um, from Keokuk, which is in the southeast corner of Iowa, I went up the Mississippi as, as far as a place called Clinton, and I fell in love with it. I thought this is an absolutely extraordinary um, uh, phenomenon, the whole, the whole river scene, everything about it. And I thought, well, this would make a really interesting journey to cycle the entire length of the Mississippi River doing performances. And so with, with my um, uh, trusted sponsors, Connecticut Yankee Peddler and Ice Strikes, as was then, um, we said, yeah, let's, let's, pitch it, let's pitch it out and see if you can come back next year, which was 2020. Of course, that didn't happen because of COVID. And then 2021, it didn't happen because of COVID. And then 2022, it didn't happen because of COVID and visa problems and all the rest of it. And so we finally got it together to, for me to be able to come over again, starting in a couple of weeks' time, actually. I'll be flying out on April the 7th to um, Chicago from London Heathrow. Okay, that's a good place to pause here. Um, and we will go into some of those uh well, most of those details about the yeah. trip, John. But let's back up a little bit and talk about the kit. So yeah. you you did the rag rag ride trip uh with an, an ice trike and a trailer. Uh why not just use the same exact uh trike and trailer as you did for rag ride? Right. Well, it's a logistical thing, really. Um, it, it turns out that Ice Strikes have been major sponsors of Inner Tuba activity for years. And it, it turns out that logistically, it's actually much simpler for them to ship out a new trike to wherever it's required for me um, each time that that, that that is required. And then the second um, sponsor, Connecticut Yankee Peddler, as many people will know here, is a very splendid um, recumbent trike dealer, ice dealer. Um, in in um, in Iowa, Sheraton, Iowa, and they 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 then let me use it for a while, and then at the end of that, they can sell it as an X demo model. Um, so we we don't end up with trikes that kind of nominally belong to in a tuba, not doing very much for extended periods of time, and I get to be able to use the latest kit, which is which which is coming off the production lines as well. So um, yeah, so that that's the, that's the trike um, Ice Adventure HD. 
um, tried and tested, absolutely fantastic for what for what I do. It's beautifully comfortable, very stable. Doesn't have to be terribly fast because I'm not because I'm pulling a trailer, and the trailer um, that's undergoing big developments at the moment as well. The trailer chassis, which was built for the um, 2019 Ragbri ride, is proven, and that's great, and that's going to be used again. But we're going for a lighter weight box body this time. And enter um, the third, um, third sponsor, and that's TerraCycle. Um, Pat Franz over in um, Portland, Oregon, um, manufacturer of all sorts of accessories for trikes, as people will know, has um, has has um, volunteered his skill to building a new lightweight plastic um, trailer, um, which is in, in the process of being completed at the moment. And the, the, the weight saving from that is going to be very significant and is going to make the, the riding much more pleasurable and, frankly, safer. Because if you're, t if you're towing a great big heavy trailer, um, there's lots of load and it can, you know, things can go wrong. So, yeah, so it's going to be a lot, lot more um, agile, I would say, this time. I've, I, I carry with me the full sort of independent self-supported touring kit that um, anybody going on a self-supported touring kit would have, tent, sleeping bags, cooking gear, um, you know, all, 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 all of that kind of stuff. Um, um, and in addition to that, I've got all of the things that I need for my musical show, which the biggest of which is my tuba. Uh, but I've also got some pre-recorded um, uh, accompaniments, musical accompaniments, for which I need to have a, a, a speaker and I need to be able to manipulate all of that with a, with a laptop. And more recently, um, I've developed a, a thing called house concerts. And in the house concerts, I actually put on a sort of a, um, um, an electronic presentation, sort of a, a you know, kind of PowerPoint type thing, um, for which I need a television screen. So okay. I think I'm, prob I'm probably the only cycle touring um, tuba player who carries a 32-inch television with them as well. <laughs> I, I think that is uh, – you, you might have stopped even before the television part and and been correct, uh, John. Um, where do you want to play? What have you got lined up? Uh, How does that all work? Well, ba basically, there's three different sorts of show that I'm I'm offering. Um, and in no, in, in no particular order, but the first one is house concerts. Um, believe it or not, um, I've got, uh, I've, I've really enjoyed the success of playing in people's homes. And because by and large in America, homes are quite a lot bigger than they are here, um, you know, to, to set up in somebody's lounge or front room with my TV and my whole performance show um, with accompaniments and play, um, play pieces it's, it's a combination of storytelling and um and with musical interludes if you like so that's one thing so if you've got a house on on the um, on the route and the route is very specifically defined then please get in touch because we'd love i'd love to put on a house concert and the second sort of broad body of of um, performances is for community venues for people with additional needs perhaps so um it could be an older people's home or it could be a hostel for homeless people or it could be um a rehabilitate rehabilitation center for people who have had strokes or um are recovering from um alcohol misuse or something like that um lots and lots of things with kids um you know uh, boys and girls clubs and and, and and that sort of stuff so if you've got any kind of um any kind of uh, interest or, or contacts with those sorts of people and those sorts of groups, uh, I'm all for it as well. And then um, the third thing is to be performing as a featured soloist alongside um, particularly uh, concert bands and brass bands. There's a growing, there's, there's a massive number of, of concert or wind bands in, in, in America. The culture for that um, is, is enormous. And um, as Nick will, will will know far greater than me because he's a retired high school band director, um, there's loads of high school bands, there's loads of community bands, and there are increasing numbers of brass bands as well. And I've got repertoire to play with basically those two groups that I'm, I'm ready to go with. Um, music that's been written for me, and some of it has been written originally for solo tuba with piano, and then um, has been rearranged to to work with both brass and wind bands. So Nick, let I've me got... ask, yeah, let me ask Nick here since we uh, yeah. just uh, used his name as someone who is uh, work with uh, high school bands, and I'm sure many other sorts of musical groups. Uh, how how would you view someone like John coming to play as a as a soloist, perhaps uh, with a group? Well, you know, I've already had communication with a number of high school band directors uh, or music, musicians up and down the river route. 
Um, they're fascinated by the, the, the journey because it is so unique. But um, I, John and I have now spent enough time together that I think I have a, a pretty good feel for the, for the, the, the breadth of all that he can do. And so he may, um, he may do a, a little class for you know, well, his first performance scheduled now we have at the very beginning of the tour in Boothville, Venice, Louisiana, which is the southernmost community in Louisiana at the very mouth of the river. Um, and he's going to play for uh, the entire K-8 elementary school at the end of their school day. That's his first performance on the night before he starts pedaling. So, uh, and, you know, it's probably just, I, I'm going to, John can correct me if he wants. To, to me, it's a little bit larger version of a house concert because it's going to be storytelling. It's going to be uh, giving people the, the joy of, of watching and hearing John perform. Um uh, part of the trip, of course, is during the summer break, which, as John says, boy, in the United States, they sure take long vacations. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so the schools are out of out of session from probably June 1st till about September, depending on where you are. So it's a little harder, but we've, we've even got someone up in Minnesota who, during their August uh, preliminary work with the bands, they have evening rehearsals, and we're now linking up in White Bear Lake, Minnesota, um, and so he'll be there. Um, to do a presentation for the bands, even though the school's not in session, so yeah. um, it's just going to it's going to light up the band programs, is the way I look at it. Yeah, Nick, let me also ask you this because I've you know I've talked to John about this before, and I'm well aware of this, but I think maybe you're uniquely uh, poised to talk about this. John is more than just a tuba player and more than a performer, and especially for children, and especially in in, in schools. He brings a lot to uh, the table here besides just playing tuba for the kids. What else does he teach kids uh, when he is out there performing? Well, I, you know, again, I'm going to I'll internalize it. What the types of things I think that it touched me the most deeply is um, as students who are music students know, um, the payoff is due to some something where you have a long time commitment, a long term commitment to be a singer or an instrumentalist and for John to have a lifetime commitment to being a brass player and, and a long commitment to being, again, being a trike rider and sharing it. Um, music in and of itself is great to be able to play in your own home when you want to, but part of the joy is actually tr sharing it with the audience, bringing it out to the public giving them something that they just didn't even know they were going to ever experience. And that's what John Hodkin is. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, it, it'll be a delight. I'm, I'm, I can't wait until he, until our schedules and the geography mesh and I can actually be there in person to, to see it happen. So again, in the, in the schools uh, or at a, at a rehabilitation center or whatever, um, there are so many facets to John Hodkin to inner tuba. <laughs> Um, that he can touch people in so many different ways, and they're going to leave better for it. I love it. The John Hodkin experience, or the inner tuba experience. Yeah, you could maybe call the tour uh, the musical aspects yeah. of it that as well. John, I, I want you to react to what Nick said, but before you do, I, I, I think this is a great place for maybe you to describe for folks. I don't know if I've ever really asked you this. Um, wh why do you do this, John? Why, what, what is it? about John Hodkin that makes him want to tour around the world and play uh, a tuba in front of people who appreciate it, kids and adults and everyone. Why do you do it, John? Well, I mean, like, like most of your um, viewers and listeners here, I, I just absolutely adore recumbent trikes and, and, and traveling by human power is just an extraordinary experience. The fact, the very fact that you can t take a trailer that you'd too big to even pick up and you can pull it across a continent with your own human power is a remarkable thing uh, and it's it, it's just an extraordinary sort of combination of engineering and, and vision to be able to do those things um and, and I, lo I love playing music and so you know life's too short to to, to not do the things that you really want to do and if by doing those uh, the, the, the sort of very broad message that i want to, to leave to most of my audiences, and particularly to children, is that I'm not I'm not insisting that everybody has to become a tuba player, or that they have to become a recumbent cyclist, or they indeed they have to travel anywhere. But the the, the the overarching message is to find something that you really love, 
that you that you want to um, um, em, em, engage yourself with and immerse yourself in um, to to the point that you become really good at it. And then once you're really good at it, you can be more used to society and you're better for yourself as well. And it doesn't matter what it is. It can be it can be sort of making furniture or it can be knowing everything there is to know about trees or it can be conserving things or it can be, you know, being a weightlifter. It doesn't really matter. As That's long as you have that passion. Yeah. Nick yeah, was yeah, talking yeah. About, yeah. And, and, and you exude that as well, Gary. You know, the, you, you completely you. You, you, you completely, you, you know, you you um, you shine that out with the laid back bite report. For everyone that's seeing this and hearing this, to know um, how much it is costing when John goes into a school or to a venue, what what does it cost them to have you perform, John? That's a set. Well, <laughs> th thanks to the my, my sponsors. I mean, basically, the deal is that uh, um, I can do all of this. Um, um, if if my expenses are covered, basically, and and that with generous support is is the case right now, um, and then the the shows are free at the point of delivery, um, uh, but I will be asking for donations um, and donations which are made during the actual tour will be put into you can donate online and I'll have a bucket and and and, and in the way that I did in two thousand nineteen, um, you know people can donate donate cash as well. Um, and what I'm going to do this time is rather than having one specific charity that I'm raising money for, I'm going to, I'm going to find examples of not-for-profits and for small charities and initiatives which assist um, children and young people with the special and additional needs right the way up the country. So, it, so sorry, right the way up the, up the river you know, up from up the Mississippi. So it might be that in one place you've got a, um, a specialist um, playground for, for children with physical disabilities, or in another place it might be that there's a music project going on that which is engaging kids with autism, or the next place it might be, um, you know, young adults with learning disabilities in their late teens, early 20s, transitioning from being living with their parents to independent living, that kind of thing. Um, and so if you've got a project that you think is worthy of that kind of support and broadly fits that remit um you know we can consider putting some of the money towards each of those projects so everybody will get you know some people will get fifty dollars here seventy dollars there whatever and the amount of money that's amassed um will depend upon how generous people are um, in response to my play <laughs> and and john so uh, um more specifically when we talk about how people can support you so on the spot that's how people will support you but yeah. in general folks that are watching us now and they want to support Inner Tuba's Mississippi River Tour. Um, can they go to your website to do this? Yes, yes, please. I mean, right, right now, um, we, the amount of money, uh, unless something catastrophic happens with the exchange rates or with inflation, right now, I think I've got enough money to do low budget traveling for the entire journey, paying for my cheese and paying for any overnight accommodation, campsite fees, and that kind of thing. Um, but there is still room for me to buy some more kit. Um, and up until between now and the first pedal stroke of the tour, um, any money that's donated will go towards that, towards that kit. What sort um, of things, what sort of things do you think you could use? Uh, yeah, for? right. Well, some of it is to do with the musical side of things. I think some kind of an MP3 player, MP3 recorder would be quite good. I certainly need a television. I need a new speaker. Um, I think it would be good to have some sort of better quality camera, probably a better mobile phone, all of that electronic stuff, maybe some sort of um, Garmin-type navigation equipment. Um, so, yeah, um, th th that performance side of things. And another big one is, the, is um, some possibly some sort of canopy um, to keep the sun off me. And that would be, that would be good as well. Um, so yeah, broadly those things. I had thought about if I if I'd had sufficient funding for far enough advance to have been able to coordinate it all, um, uh, the combination of a solar PV to put a mount on the lid of the trailer. So this is kind of for the future with a, with a, a quality probably lithium ion battery from which I could charge all of the all of the things as I'm going along. Possibly putting it in with um, Dynamo hubs as well. But that's questionable whether that's viable for me to do that because I re I don't go very fast. You know, the, the average speed is about six or seven miles an hour. And, and John, just to be very clear, so folks understand, even though you're talking about solar cells and dynamos, yeah, yeah. 
you are not going to be e- electric assisted in any way on this tour. This is this is there's no electric motor involved. This is right. all pedal power from yeah. John Hodgkin, right? Yeah, I mean, part part of the reason for that. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm absolutely think that there's a super place for electric assist, and I'm not against it in any but in any way, shape, or form. Um, but from from my standpoint, there's an element of, I, I don't know pride in it, perhaps. But you know. Having said that, I really, really think that the whole business of being able to go across a continent on human power is a, is a, is extraordinary. Um, then I want to do it by human power. And the other side of it is that if I'm if I'm setting myself that challenge and I'm saying to people, um, you know, you might want to donate to it because you know you, you you're you're uh, supporting something which has some effort behind it. Um, e- even if I had only sort of three or four percent of the overall energy that went into it was from something other than my legs, um, then people would go, "Well, he's not really done it. He's 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 got a, he's got a motor on there." <laughs> That's one side of it, and the other one is the is the logistics of of charging and recharging, and what do you do if you can't get the thing charged up, and it's something else to go wrong. And um, you know, touch wood, I, I tend not to go wrong. I'm quite lucky. I, I don't get problems with knees and, and and torn ligaments and things, and I, I tend to be able to keep going so long as, like a tugboat, I don't overdo it, and so long as I don't try and go too fast. You know, I, I can I can plod along all day um, within the aerobic threshold. So, and and do you feel like you are in a uh, a condition at this point physically to be able to take this on have you, what how's the training been going lately well the training's not really happening at the moment i've done, i've got lots of other things going on at the moment which is, is taking me away from all of that but uh I, I i think i've done enough to be able to to um cover the the the, the miles which i've set myself and it's nothing like. I mean, I, we talked about Ragbri before, the registered annual Great Bicycle Ride across Iowa, which was around about 475 miles over seven days, and that was absolutely killing. It was just an, far too much for me to do, really. And I was on the road for 18, 19, 20 hours a day for seven days, um, and I did it. Um, uh, this time, uh, I've set myself a limit of around about 30 miles a day. The tour, the, the entire tour, is 150 days of which 100 are riding days. And on those riding days, I'm doing no more than 30 miles. So I could be on the road at five o'clock in the morning and, and at six miles an hour, I could be you know home and home and dry having done the journeys, ha- ha- having done the day's miles by you know before midday. And yeah. this brings us to the actual uh, dates and the route. So let's, let's uh, hone in now on where you're going to be and when you're going to be there, uh, at least as best as possible. So describe, if you would, uh, the beginning, uh, where you're ending up, and at least the states that you're going through. And give me any highlights along the yeah. way. And, yeah, and, and give me some kind of parameters in terms of dates as well as you do. Okay. Well, the, the, the first thing to say is on all the w's.innertuba.org.uk, there is now a published uh, itinerary page. And because of the fact that I'm tying in with, with bands and so on, it is very prescribed. It's not like most cycle touring where you can just sort of decide that you're going to go that far or not. It, it is at the end of, it, of each day, I've got a place where I need to be. So the itinerary is there. But broadly, I start off south of New Orleans in Bougal, Venice, as Nick was saying, and I go through um, New Orleans. I'm going to spend seven days in New Orleans and then up from New Orleans to Baton Rouge. And I'm spending five days in Baton Rouge. In Baton Rouge, we've, we've, we've hooked up, thanks to Nick's support as well, in, we've, we've hooked up with a lovely chap called Dustin who runs Front Yard Bikes. It's a community bike project to encourage young people to get involved in, um, in the repair and maintenance and, 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 and building of, of, of bikes. Um, and he, he, it's a real sort of social socially inclusive thing that he does so you know I'm, I'm hooking up with them and i'm going to be doing quite a lot of stuff in baton rouge then on to natchez and then from natchez i'm going up the natchez trace i'm deviating from the mississippi at that point going up the natchez trace frankly because it's nicer riding and secondly because it goes to jackson mississippi where a certain well, what's so special about that well there's a certain trey burgoyne lives in jackson who all of your viewers and listeners will know yeah Hi, Trey. And so um, we're hoping that he's going to introduce me to a whole pile of musical people because Trey's a trumpet player as well. Um, 
and uh, and community things in, in in Jackson, and then from Jackson up to Nashville, and then from Nashville I go north, um, I, I go back northwest um, and rejoin the Mississippi River um, to go to St. Louis. And in St. Louis, I've got I'm featured soloist with the St. Charles Community Band, which sits on the Missouri River, um, and that's what that's kind of in, in, within Greater St. Louis. And I'm going to be there for a week, um, and then from St. Louis, St. Louis, I go up through um, Muscatine, Keokuk, up to the Quad Cities, and I'll be in the Quad Cities for about a week. And I'm really looking forward to that because it's going back to the Quad Cities where I spent the week before, and I've got some dear friends there. And I'm going to be performing with a lovely band called the Big River Brass Band, and I'm going to be featured soloist with 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 them, and we're going to do a video recording of the concert. So people, and it's going to be live streamed as well. Can't remember exactly what date it is. I think it's the 23rd of July. But again, you can find that up from the website. And then from there up towards northeast Iowa, and I'm really looking forward to that bit. I'm told that the northeast northeast Iowa and the Iowa Wisconsin border around places like the Dubuque and La Crosse is absolutely stunningly beautiful. So I'm going there, and then Winona, I've got friends there that I'm going to be with, and Lake City, I've got another um, uh, high school band director who's putting me in touch with some uh, some some bands up there. I'm going to hook up. I'm, I'm hoping to hook up again with the lovely Loudmouth Brass, who I played with in Ragbri um, before um, when I was in, two, in 2019. And they're a lovely sort of brass and reed um, um, jazz based ensemble. I'm going to hook up with them. Um, and then up to the Twin Cities. And then from the Twin Cities to um, the headwaters of the Mississippi, through places like Stillwater, White Bear Lake. Yeah. Um, um, Stillwater, Walker, um, Lake Itasca, which is actually the, the, the national park there, and that's where the headwaters of the Mississippi are in Minnesota. And then I end in the nearest town to there, which is called Bemidji in, in northern Minnesota. And we're hoping to have a sort of celebratory five days of things happening there. Uh, I'm in touch with Mary, a warm showers host there. The Bemidji Community Band are considering what they might do even though it's out, out of their season, they might they might put put together a few players that we can we can play with. So that's basically it. It's it, it's from south of New Orleans right the way to the headwaters through the, the taking time out in the major cities on the way, and um, linking up with house concerts, community um, performances, and uh, concert brass bands and wind bands uh, uh, all the way up. And, so the, and the dates the dates, John. You're leaving I, when and when do you get to Bemidji? Yeah, the start date, I, I, my first pedal stroke is on the 19th of April, on the morning of the 19th of April. And the I arrive in Bemidji on, I think it's the 15th of September. Um, no, 10th of September, and, I, and I'm and i there until the 15th of September. Correct. So the final day of the ride. It is the 15th, isn't it, Nick? Yes. Yeah, 15th of September. So that that that's the... The entire 150 days, and it does tally up to 150 days. <laughs> Fantastic! And uh, Nick, any uh, any final thoughts about, about uh, John's tour here? You want to share? Well, if, if for the people that was learning about this for the first time, definitely go to his website. Um, there's a lot to learn about the, the project. Um, I think I'm not sure that it's been mentioned that during the journey, most of the updating is going to be on your Facebook page. Is that right, yes. John? Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I, for those people that are inclined, especially those that are along the route, um, if you think, can think of any contacts you have that may be music teachers, it could be, uh, you know, all of those venues that John talked about, whether it's an assisted living center or whatever, if you have contacts anywhere along the route, take a look at the itinerary, um, and be in touch with John about anything you can think of that you could come up with. And then for those of us that just love to get on the road and ride, if you're anywhere close, I don't think John would mind having some company riding along with him. No. Um, I certainly plan to do that myself. But at this point, um, you know, this, the community of bike trike people is such a great resource that yeah. um, if you're now learning about it or if you've known about it, um, take a look at the itinerary. See what you can do to uh, support John in finding contacts. That's, that's kind of what my full-time gig is right now, just <laughs> trying to figure out how we can link up with people and – make them aware of it because uh, as, as we all know, if you don't know what you don't know, 
there's no chance that you can be a part of it. But it, yes. it, yes. if you're watching this now and, and you know about it, you might have a, a, a great role to play and help us out. And um, it's all uh, it's all for good purposes. Um, and the, the donations that go to local charities, it's just a beautiful story. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> That's yeah. great. And uh, yeah. And so, yeah, if you want to ride with John, too, uh, I think he will encourage that. As you said, you're not going to get left in the dust, John. You're doing five or six miles an hour. So anyone yeah. should be able to pretty much keep up unless they're toting two tubas or something. They should be able to keep up pretty well with you. And that's not very likely. So yeah. that's that's terrific. Uh, with that, I think we're going to wrap it up, uh, John and Nick. Uh, John, any final thoughts for us before we leave? Yeah, I'm just just thank you so much anybody who wants to support this in any way. I'm really looking forward to meeting all of you. I'm getting very excited about the whole prospect of getting on the road again in 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 this which will be my biggest um, you know, in a tuber event ever. Um do come and take, take be, be a part of it in any way. Um but also remember that the itinerary is pretty strict and so if you live 20 miles off that's too far, you know. It's got to be on the route, or we'll look towards hooking up with you another time. You know. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so yeah. the expectations are reasonable here. You un people can understand, yeah. what, you know, yeah. the requirements. Yeah. All right. And Nick, any final thoughts from you then? Well, just thanks in advance to all of you that are viewing that might have anything you can contribute in terms of contacts, people that John could be in touch with, or venues, or um, anything you can do to support it. Uh, it it'll be worth. Uh, It'll be <laughs> worth the time. Great. And folks, we're going to uh, let John uh, play out, uh, uh, play this segment out, actually, with a little piece on tuba. Mm -hmm. 